welcome back to the Alliance Tournament. I am CCP Rise, and I'm replacing CCP Fozzy, and with me I have Bach and Alien coming in for Elise Randolph. Uh, Bach, why don't you tell us about what we have on the field? Hey, good afternoon, guys. We have a real Capel team and a Scum team sitting awfully close to one another. They came in at a pretty acute angle. They did come in at range. We have a triple Slepner setup, Scimitar, two Celestis, three Heretic, two Mollus, and a Kitsune for Scum. And Road Capel are bringing out a double Armageddon, double Eos, Onero, double Heretic, triple Talwar, double Kestrel setup. So we're going to see a very quick support war here with a lot of small ships and uh, an interesting matchup between these Slepners and two Geddons and two Eos. Yeah, and if you guys weren't uh, around last weekend, just to jog your memory a bit, this is almost exactly the same setup for Roth that they had uh, last weekend. They've changed a little bit with their support, um, swapped out a Celestis for these uh, heretics, basically. Um, Scum, on the other hand, were in a really bizarre match where they had um, a couple nightmares, I believe. They ended up winning after the match went to time, and they won kind of in the uh, super tie-dye mode afterwards. Uh, so they've switched things up quite a bit by going to these Slipners. And they're underway. It looks like I see Damps going across the field both ways yet. No drones launched. And now we go some drones from the scum side. Augmented Berserkers. We interestingly, have a, what is it, a heretic, scum heretic pulling off a, off by himself. Kitsune down almost immediately for the scum team. Uh, taken off the field really quickly, probably by those Talwars. Uh, heretic taking some damage on Rokapel along with the Talwar. So many Damps on the field, you can see there's, a, like you said, a huge support war going on here to figure out uh, who will get control of uh, just being able to lock. Yeah, we have a Mollus down, a Celestis into armor. Meanwhile, the Rote Capel uh, Talwar is into armor as well. Heretic Rui Hoshino uh, stripped of shields, but uh, holding up. That Celestis is losing armor little by little. His shields are coming back, though. Yep, looks like the going to go for those Celestises next, and they're making really good progress. He is boosting back, um, getting reps from the Scimitar, but it looks like they're breaking him. He is, yep, taking another big chunk of structure damage there. He'll probably be going down in just a second. In the meantime, um, Carrie is taking a lot of damage as well. Yep, uh, Mollus off the field. Oh, yep. Mollus, sorry, yeah, yeah. And a Talwar now, whoa, taking a very low armor. We'll see if the repairs get on that fast enough. A Heretic for Scum as well. Stripper Shields, half armor. Celestis into low armor as well. Now the Scimitar also taking damage. Heretic into structure and off the field. Celestis short to follow. Soon to follow, I should say. And the Talwar follows him as well. Yeah, and you can see now uh, at the beginning of the match, there was damps across both teams pretty evenly, at least just in terms of number applied. But by now, Rote has a complete lock on the E-War battle. They've gotten the Celestis out of the way, they've gotten the Mollusses out of the way, and now those Slipners are going to really struggle to get anything done. Yeah, it doesn't look like Inara is having a whole lot of trouble keeping repairs on Ruri Hoshino's uh, heretic there. The Oneros is doing a good job. We have uh, Phil's, with the name I'm not going to try to pronounce, Phil on the, you know, on the Scum team, Scimitar is holding up, taking a little bit of damage. Hasn't used his ASB yet, probably because doesn't want to waste a cycle, but both Slipners we see taking a little bit of damage. Galaoth seems to be the primary target at this point. I don't know if you guys were able to see that yet, but one of the Scum Slipners, uh, piloted by Zach or Arias, actually just used one of the MJD beacons, or, or his own MJD. One way or another, he just jumped... Uh, across the field and got free of that kind of fight down in the middle. But uh, while it's happening, he lost one of his friends in the, uh, the other slip there, which did actually go down. So Scum getting beaten up pretty bad here by Rote. Yeah, and the Scimitar now into armor. This is a pretty effective setup from Rote Capel, very well executed. I know talking to Tyrus this morning, the Rote Capel captain, he was saying that he had quite a few setups uh, at his disposal today to use, and he really didn't know which one he was going to use. So I am surprised to see them bring basically what you said, a rehash of last week's setup. And a rehash of what they relied on a lot in the last Alliance tournament as well. They really, really love these Armageddon setups. Uh, and it seems like um, the thing they're most comfortable with. I wonder if they'll be able to get away from that at some point and try something completely different, because eventually people are going to start expecting this if they just keep bringing it. Well, maybe that's the mind game the meta they're playing. You know, they, Fozzie even called it out as a very standard Rokapel uh, cap warfare setup. So why not play into that? And, yeah. uh, you know, first two weekends, you don't show anything of your hand and you get into the last weekend with all your setups still hidden. So. And uh, while we're babbling, everything else has died on the scum side except for these two Slipners that did MJD away from the middle of the fight there. Um, I don't know if Rote will come out uh, after them. It looks like for now they're not really bothering and just uh, keeping them damped out while they collect loot. Uh, they'll probably come after them eventually, I guess, or MJD towards them uh, using right, those beacons just... pretty soon. But There's that's why they're not taking damage. Left. Whoa, did oh. one just boundary violate? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Boundary violation for one. We'll see if the other does us the service of uh, following it his friends. Like... Oh, no, he's turning around. <laughs> not sure if the first one may have been. He's sitting right next to an MJD beacon, so it could have been that he uh, activated it direction. again. And, activated. Yeah. Yeah. Not well, that they... there's much he can do in the match by staying on the field. but That is something we saw happen last week where someone was at uh, zero velocity activating an MJD beacon, which kind of leaves you not knowing where you're going to land. 
And yeah. In fact, that match, it actually cost them the match. It was a Paladin, very end of the match. They were way ahead. Paladin, Mike Drew Drunk dives uh, out of the arena, dies, and loses the match for him. So. And uh, I, I don't know what Road's going to, like, they still have so much time. I have to imagine they'll come out and kill this guy eventually. But, you know, if you guys are new to watching the tournament, this is, of course, all on Tranquility. Um, so the assets do matter, which is partly why Rote might be uh, motivated to loot stuff on the field. It's also why um, sometimes at the end of a match, a pilot will try and just do whatever he can to keep the ship alive. Because, you know, there's a few hundred million S here that this guy can save if he doesn't let them kill his Lipner before the time goes. Um, all the way to zero, so that that is something to keep in mind. But it looks like now Rote is heading down here, at least, uh, well, I don't know. They're kind of just chilling. Yeah, it's hard to account for what they're doing. I mean, all I see left on the field are light shield maintenance white bot ones and uh, some EC300s. I can't imagine we're that hard up for cash, considering how much I know I personally put into the fund. So I don't know what they're doing. Uh, hanging out right now, having a good time, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of strange. I mean, the... the Geddens, of course, are really slow. It would take them a while to get down there. Same with the EOSs, but they have these MJD beacons everywhere. Uh, another thing maybe we could mention, uh, if you guys are just tuning in now, this tournament does have a cube of deployable uh, micro jump drive structures that any of the ships in the match can use. Um, and so you'll see that <laughs> at least some can cause problems, of course, because they're not in the center of the arena. You can jump yourself outside and get blown up from boundary violation. But uh, I don't know. Rote doesn't seem interested so in using them it, right it here. Local. Actually, we're saying we're not going to try to chase you down. We're too slow. We're not going to throw away support to you. Um, but you guys want just white flag, or if you want to fly the Simmons or the uh, Slepner over to us, we can uh, blow it up. <laughs> yeah, but again, why would he do that? He can hang on to uh, you know some misc if he just keeps it alive. Well, you know, for 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 honorability and such. I mean, at this point, this is uh, uh, just watching. Yeah, watching damps uh, across the field. Well, of course, Scum are a very honorable uh, honorable organization, are they not? <laughs> Um, so, let's see what this local negotiation comes to. I don't know if we can actually call the match for them. I suppose we could, but, um... Uh, I think you'd need, what, both captains to agree, and I don't know if the scum guy, I, I don't know. I don't know who the scum captain is, actually, if he's even on the field right now. <laughs> One of the road Geddon's promising not to use his newts if he comes in, trying to offer <laughs> him some kind of fair agreement. It's uh, a fun story about that that Geddon pilot that was actually the rope pilot who uh, had to go to his next door neighbor and kindly ask that he shut off his wood chipper because he could not hear anything on rope team speak. So that was an amusing story about that pilot just to kill some time. Wow. He can now happily something. go over and tell him that uh, yeah, it worked. clear communication it's earned him a video is, game victory. Is now burning into range to let himself die finally. Yes. Geckos from the uh, rope capel team coming out to uh, meet him. Yep, along with some missiles. From those heretics. What do you think about heretics? We've seen uh, quite a few of those around. I saw some people in Twitch chat asking why there would be interdictors in the Alliance tournament, since of course bubbles don't matter and can't be used. But uh, why are we seeing so many of those? Well, heretics are the new saber, I think. With the range on those missiles, the light missiles have such a... Uh, they're so good at taking out frigate support. And we've seen the, the really the frigate support war matters so much. And this, in this fight was a good example. You had the, the frigate E-war, and the heretics just absolutely shred frigates. So. Uh, they're a great ship for the points, and honestly, we saw the same thing with Sabres in the last Alliance tournament. The meta shifted a little bit with the missile changes and such, so uh, yeah. Heretic's the way to go now. Cool. And this guy is finally going to go down, Zacharias, uh, past his shields now, heading into structure. Choosing the uh, most honorability uh, route, I guess, finally, and turning back towards the match. And there he goes. Congratulations to Rote Capel, staying in the winner's bracket with their second win. Yep, nice job. We'll be back in a few, guys. Whether you're into gate camping or jet can mining, you'll find Eve's best music mix at Eve Radio. Visit www.eve-radio.com today. I like waffles. I like waffles. I like waffles. Do you like waffles? Yes. Yeah, yes. I like waffles. Ah. And pancakes and French toast. <laughs>